Good morning, all. If you will take your seats, we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order at 9.30 on Thursday, November 21st. Good morning, Vice Mayor. Would the clerk, the clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Baxter. Here. Commissioner Flores. Here. Mayor Marino. Here. Commissioner Powell. Here. Commissioner Sachs. Here. Commissioner Weiss. Here. Commissioner Woodward. Here. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Weiss, would you please do the invocation and the pledge? If you're able to, please rise. We ask you, God, to bless this meeting of people who earnestly desire to do their work in the best possible way, to benefit those we serve, and to leave our children a better world. Please give us the wisdom and vision to plan adequately and to act correctly to achieve these ends. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you. Have we been duly noticed for this meeting? Yes. Okay, I'm wait. I'm, I'm getting. This is my first owning meeting as mayor, so I'm getting. I'm a little slow. Um, we have proof of publication. Yes. Do I need a motion to receive and file? Yes. So moved. Second. Oh, we got lots of motions, lots of seconds. And now I'll have the attorney do the swearing in. For all those Mayor, wishing. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. For the record, could we just have the vote called for the proof of publication? Thank you. I thought we did that. Oh, sorry. Yes, all in favor. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. 7-0. So you're not mayor anymore. Motion passes 7-0. Everybody says, please. Thank you. All those wishing to testify, please rise and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you. Now we are on to the agenda. Do we have any additions, deletions, or modifications? We do have some modifications for the uh, agenda. Um, first item um, under F, we have a request for postponements. Um, items number seven, LGA 2024, uh, six, Central Park Commerce MUPD, which is a large scale future land use amendment. Item eight, DOA 2024 313, uh, PBA Holdings, um, and ZV PDD DOA W 2024 309, Central Park Commerce MUPD as well. Um, the applicant has requested a postponement. Um, so these Three items would move to our postponement, which would be heard and the motions done before consent. On the consent agenda, item two, oh, and I have a correction that it's uh, actually January 30th, 2025, um, and not in the past. <laughs> um, the consent agenda, um, C zoning applications, DOA 2023. 1093 smart stop self storage. There is an amendment to exhibit C, the all petitions to uh, strike out reference to the Zoning Commission. Item number three, CA 2023-01741 HID Plaza. Again, a modification to exhibit C for the class A conditional use to add in an engineering condition number three. Item four, CA 2024-219 Waste Pro Palm Beach uh, to modify exhibit C for the class A conditional use uh, to add in a use limitation, item number three. Under C, ULDC revisions, item 10, the Ag Marketplace for first reading. Um, we're modifying the staff recommendation um, for A, that the both of the um, items would be heard before 5 uh, PM 
um, and then B, the approval of the first reading um, for item number 10, the permission to advertise um, for second reading and adoption is December 12th um, at 1 p.m. Um, and not at 9.30. And then on item 11, flood damage prevention ordinance first reading, there's a, mo a modification to the staff report where they've included a letter from FEMA as an exhibit 14 and it's attached. Thank you. So we're going to do two motions. One would be to accept the agenda with the additions and deletions, and then we'll make a motion on the postponement. Yes. Okay. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries 7-0. And now may I have a motion to for the postponement of 7, 8, and 9? Mayor, I'd like to go ahead and make that motion. I'd also like to request uh, that staff... Uh, bring back separately the uh, MUPD civic site dedication to discuss uh, since it would be a policy change. Uh, I'm going to actually ask for discussion on that. Okay. So Commissioner Baxter, Vice Mayor Baxter. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I would also, I would like when they bring this back to also bring back any other civic sites that are close to this property to let us commissioners know what we're asking okay. when it comes back. Thank you. Commissioner Woodward. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, my question and concern is more on the water issue. This came up in my agenda review. When uh, we were in Dallas, several of us, there was a speaker there who was mentioning a, a cloud-based uh, data centers that have been built in the area and uh, the surprise in the amount of consumption of water that they use and uh, two problems with it. One, even if it's a closed system, the uh, water gets contaminated to the point right now where we don't have filtration systems to clean the water to put it back into the system. That's very much in question. Or if it's an evaporative system, which means the water goes through, it evaporates into the air, um, it's cleaner as far as that's concerned, but the consumption of water is vast. So my question for staff is if we postpone this to January 30, is that January, January 30th, is that enough time for you to come back to us with potential solutions to this? Because I know we've done some research already, Fairfax, Virginia, a few other places are working on code changes or even ordinances on this. Is that enough time for you to come back to us before? I believe it is. Um, we plan on meeting with the applicant and water utilities and Paul Linton in December to try to get a handle on the scope of the improvements that they're proposing and the impacts on water and wastewater. Okay. Because I am in support of a data center coming here, but I think it's important for us to realize this is new technology, AI-based cloud technology. It's, it's using a lot of water, and there's a lot of municipalities that have brought these in without a full understanding of what it's doing to the water supply. We do have an abundance of water, but we could have a drought at any time. And, you know, I just think it's important for us to really know what this is before coming so we can at least approve, you know, have a better understanding of what we're approving. Um, so I just would like it noted, as long as we can have that conversation with you before this comes back at the zoning meeting. So thank you. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. And Greg, do you want to, again, say what your motion was including? So my motion was my motion was to postpone this item uh, to January 30th, 2025, and to have staff come back separately with the uh, MUPD civic site dedication as a separate uh, discussion item, at a uh, preferably at a separate meeting. Could you amend to add the water issue as well before? And I'd be happy to amend that to include a discussion and be able to uh, talk about uh, the water issue as outlined by my colleague. Attorney Stone. Uh, Madam Mayor, it, it, it may be best to separate those into two separate motions. Be happy to do just that. Just to kind of keep it clean so that the postponement stands on its own and then the direction is separate. Okay, so my, I restate my motion, which is postponed to January 30th, 2025. I have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. And staff has directions. And staff has direction for the MUPD in the water. For the, I'm sorry, for the yes. civic site. For and, the civic and sites. as far as having that conversation, the December 12th uh, 
hearing is in a minute, but um, for having a separate conversation, that would be the only time that zoning can get before you on those two topics. Um, um, it's actually a light agenda. It only has three items on it, so we can have a discussion on those items if looking at Patrick Rutter and Whitney, if. And Mayor, let me, let me work with facilities and see if we'd be prepared to come back in December and turn it around that quickly. Worst case, we'll be back in January. Okay. Thank you. Do, do we want clarification on, you're speaking to all MUPDs and the, the policy around civic sites and MUPD. Okay. That's what I want. I think the overarching thing is we need a better understanding of civic sites and, what, and the needs of them and what else is going on around them. Okay. Got it. Okay. So we had a motion. We had a second. We had that all passed. So now we're on co to consent. So before we uh, approve the consent agenda, is there anyone that would like to pull anything from consent? Okay. And may I please, before we do our motion, any disclosures for the consent? So I will start with Mayor Flores. Uh, excuse me. You, you, well, you were a mayor once. Commissioner Flores. No disclosures. Thank you. Commissioner Sachs. None from uh, District 5. Commissioner Woodward. No disclosures and consent. Thank you. Commissioner Baxter. Vice Mayor Baxter. Ah, it's going to take a minute. No problem, Mayor. On number six, I have written disclosures that have been given to the clerk. No verbal and no site visit for number six. Commissioner Wise. Thank you, Mayor. On item number four, uh, that's the Waste Pro Palm Beach, I had uh, verbal communication with Josh Nichols. I have email correspondence that have been filed with the clerk. Thank you. Commissioner Powell. Uh, there are no disclosures uh, for me, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And uh, for me, I had uh, verbal communications with Josh Nichols on item number four. Now we have all disclosures, so may I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. I have a first from vice, the vice mayor and, and a second from Commissioner Woodward. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? See that it passes 7-0. Moving on to the regular agenda, now that we have removed items 7, 8, and 9, we are on to item 10, Agricultural Marketplace in Preserve, and this is the first reading. Does staff have a presentation? Item 10, we do not have a presentation uh, unless the board would like one. Uh, this item was presented and adopted with um, the associated plan amendment several months ago. So. Okay. Do I have any questions? I have two lights on. Commissioner Weiss. Mayor, I'd like to go ahead and make the motion to approve uh, this item. And do I have a second? Yes, second. I have a I second. have a discussion or, question. Correct, and that'll come after the second. I'm we have a second from the Vice Mayor. Commissioner Sachs. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is for the staff. What is the Differences. Why are we doing this for um, this particular issue of the marketplace? Was it to sync up language between what we did before and what we're doing today? And I wonder if you could explain that to the members of the board. Yeah, a couple of months ago, um, the board adopted a privately proposed comprehensive plan amendment and future land use amendments for the Bedner property. There was um, a very multiple zoning and a single future land use amendment and text amendment to the plan. Mm -hmm. This is putting the um, implementation of that board action into the plan. So the, the policy decision was made at the prior hearing. Okay. So there's no difference, no changes, uh, no modifications in what we did before. It's just a matter of administrative uh, policy to move forward on it. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. I wanted that on the record. Good morning, Ms. Morton. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. All the opposed? See that the motion carries 7-0. Moving on to item number 11, flood damage prevention ordinance, first reading and adoption. We're gonna take a, a slight moment for Doug and team to come up. Perfect. And I'll move down. Thank you.
Thank you. Our favorite topic. Anything new to add? What would you like to say today? And can you please introduce yourselves. Good morning. For the record, Doug Wise, Palm Beach County Building Division. Um, with me, I have Jacqueline Anderson, a certified floodplain manager on staff. Uh, we're here to present, obviously, our flood damage prevention regulations. This is the last piece of the MAP amendments that have been going on in Palm Beach County for the last three and a half years. Um, so uh, we've, we've made some adjustments. Uh, Jackie will go through the specific changes to the ordinance since the last time it was adopted. Um, so we do have a presentation just in case any questions come up. Um, that you, It's an abbreviated presentation from what we had given before. But nothing has changed since the last time that we met. The policy that was issued by FEMA in February of 2020 that requires us to implement the design and performance standards for agricultural structures and accessory structures. That is what we're implementing. So any um, agricultural or agricultural structure has to be elevated or dry flood proof, meaning made watertight so that it's substantially impermeable to water infiltration. And um, if they want to install flood vents, then the would require, excuse me, a variance from the Flood Damage Prevention Board. Um, accessory structures that are larger than 600 square feet, the same if it's uh, between 601 and 1,200 square feet, it would require a variance from the Flood Damage Prevention Board to install flood vents. Otherwise, it would have to be elevated or dry flood proofed. The other change that's being made is to implement the requirements of the 2021 addendum to the community rating system program that requires that manufactured homes be elevated to a certain, um, the, where the bottom frame has to be elevated one foot above the base flood elevation and also changing foundation requirements. The other change that's being made is to um, implement the size restrictions by the Florida, that was also implemented in the 2023 Florida Building Code that requires that these um, structures, uh, accessory structures that are um, between or less than 600 square feet, they can have the um, flood vents without a variance. And the last change uh, is to implement our um, new flood hazards with the new maps limits of moderate wave action and coastal a zones no 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 this is this is just in case we have any questions um yeah coastal a zones um are subject to one and a half to three foot wave action so we will be implementing v zone requirements high velocity requirements so that those structures are resilient against wave action um I do have a presentation here because there were some questions that came up in our last meeting about the X zone restrictions, um, but that is not really anything that's being changed in the current ordinance modifications. Thank you. I don't see any lights on. Commissioner Sachs. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The question with regard to the accessories uh, buildings, these are not to be used for habitation on these areas. If they were used for habitation, such as mother-in-law buildings, they call them, or you know, for other uses where people would live, would they then be subject to the same rules and regulations as you're outlining for, um, say, so, mobile homes and things like that? Right. So habitable structures are not; are, they cannot be dry flood-proofed. Okay, they would have to meet the elevation requirements. That's the only. Um, that's the only option for a habitable structure. So in the definitions for accessory structure and agricultural structures, we have a specific statement that says does not include that. Now, right habitable. That takes me then to the next question, which is agricultural areas where there are farm workers and those accessory structures are, and I think there's some federal regulations with regard to farm worker habitation on the land. Are they also subject to the enhanced building uh, regulations for flooding? So habitable structures are subject to the Florida Building Code. Those are not exempt from the Florida Building Code and they are not exempt, um, well, no building is exempt from FEMA requirements. So um, any habitable structure for a farm, um, they would need to be elevated 
above the base flood elevation, one foot above base flood elevation pursuant to the Florida Building Code because the whole state of Florida has that free board requirement of one foot above base flood. Thank you. My pleasure. Vice Mayor Baxter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for the benefit of the board, the Ag Enhancement Council um, has actually met this past week on this and is discussing it because who is impacted more than the agricultural industry. And um, after a long discussion, so thank you, Doug, thank you, Jackie, and everyone um, that participated in that, uh, the Ag Enhancement Council was comfortable with what is before us today, which is why I'm supporting it. And um, I do look forward to uh, staff bringing back more information in regards to the X zones and regards to you know, the community ratings. Um, the points. The points, yep. And um, I look forward to those discussions. But as this sits today, I think it's good. Thank you. And I actually will make the motion to approve it. Thank you. Second. Oh, I got lots of seconds. Commissioner Weiss was the first. Um, does anyone have any more questions for staff? Would anyone like discussion? Seeing none. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any nays? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we are now moving on to comprehensive plan and FLUA and zoning initiated items. Item number 12, county-owned natural area fluid and FLUA, not fluid, excuse me, FLUA and rezoning initiation. And we're gonna have another shuffle as Deborah Drum comes up and their team has a presentation on this item. Thank you. Good morning. And who's Good presenting morning. today? And please introduce yourself because you're a new face. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, good morning, Madam Mayor. Good morning, Vice Mayor. Congratulations. <laughs> and all the other members of the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, for the record, Timothy Hangs of the Environmental Resource Management Department. And with me is Deborah Drum, our director. And also accompanying me is Allison Spall of the Natural Areas Division. <clears throat> so the item before you today uh, is for consideration of initiation of county amendments um, for lands owned and purchased by the county at the request of ERM. Um, and more specifically, these requests include a future land use amendment to the comprehensive plan to change the future land use to the conservation future land use designation on approximately 155 acres of our natural areas. And these areas include uh, the Cypress Creek, Hungryland Slough, Pine Glaze natural areas, and the Palm Beach Heights natural areas. Also included in these amendments is an official zoning map amendment to rezone uh, to the Preservation Conservation Zoning District uh, on approximately 13,431 acres. And this request is consistent with past efforts to facilitate the appropriate uh, future land use and zoning designations for these preservations and protection of environmentally sensitive lands. Um, and just to summarize this, uh, this request will allow for these natural areas to continue in their state as intended in perpetuity. And we ha we're here to answer any questions that you might have. And just for clarity, these are only on lands owned by Palm Beach Correct, County. correct. Only county owned lands, correct. Thank you. Commissioner Powell. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Mr. Haynes, thank you. And this is a question that I didn't think about in um, our pre-meeting, but these lands that are owned by the county that we're fixing the uh, zoning on so they're consistent, um, and you said in perpetuity, so is there, is there ever a process where these lands can be taken out of conservation and potentially used for some type of development? Uh, if, I said bite your tongue. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, no, I'm, I mean, I'm asking in, in that undevelopment. Question because <laughs> It's county-owned land, and um, it's the, the zoning and land use are being made consistent to be put into conservation. But there's a, is there 
any possibility in the future that there's a process where these lands will be changed or even if it's beyond this, this commission or this board? It's so impossible. that is a um, good morning, Deb Drum, yep. Department Director for ERM. And um, that's a multi-layered question with a lot of, um, there's no one size fits all in terms of the answer to that question. Um, it depends on how the properties were purchased. In some cases they were bought with bond dollars that have some restrictions. Some of the lands have um, relationships with the Florida State of Florida Communities Trust that has some restrictions. So. Um, and as I mentioned in our briefing yesterday, I kind of alluded to the fact that um, the board, this board took an action on October 22nd, encouraging uh, third party held conservation easements on the property. So to answer your question, on some properties, uh, we do have many layers of protection. Um, the, the code uh, encourages us to have as many layers of protection on lands that were purchased and intended for perpetual status in a preservation conservation status. Um, and so a lot of those protections are in place. Um, but you really could at any point on some lands don't have any protections on them. And so future boards are in the in the future, there could be a decision to take those lands and turn them into something else. Um, and so, uh, but, but the original intention or why these were acquired or why they were set aside for, was for conservation and preservation in perpetuity. And that was what was communicated to the public for the purchase of those lands originally. Thank you. Good answer. We don't want development on lands that we have purchased for conservation. So thank you. And we need the layers in place and the, the uh, third party agreement, these will then go into the third party agreement, correct? This is, um, th this is really a, a zoning and future land use. This is really something that we've always routinely done in terms of when you have land that's designated by the county and under the management of ERM for um, preservation and conservation, we routinely go through the process of identifying ones that need to make sure that the floor, future land use and the zoning reflect that status. And so this is a bit of an administrative cleanup, so all of our systems do reflect that status. Thank you. Commissioner Powell, good question. Commissioner ba uh, Vice Mayor Baxter. Thank you, Mayor. I briefly covered this yesterday. Um, during agenda review and wanted to bring it to uh, my board and awareness that I wanted to get some clarification about roads. Did you happen to look that up and get it for so, me? So what we can say, so the concern that was brought up um, with, with conservation lands in the county was not to interfere with any long-term transportation plans that we have in the county in terms of roads. And so um, we acknowledge that, you know, I, I told the I told the, the vice mayor that, you know, we're not here to try to prevent the county from reaching its long term transportation goals. Um, we have a conservation lands protection ordinance and the intention and the purpose of that ordinance is to allow for uh, these roads to be developed, even if they do impact conservation lands on those edges. So um, that is absolutely something that is allowed. A good example is North Lake Boulevard. So we are working very closely with the engineering department on the expansion of a North Lake Boulevard. It will encroach upon Loxahatchee Slough. There is a process in place that is completely transparent and documented for the county to be able to do that and to um, still protect county natural areas at the same time that we're meeting our infrastructure needs with regard to roads. Um, the, I just wanted to mention too, the third party held conservation easement effort is also not to prevent from those kind of things to happen. It is intended to prevent the wholesale development for the middle of a property where we decide that uh, at a future board might decide that there is some greater need uh, at that time than preservation conservation, which was not intended by the preservation or the acquisition of those lands. So it's really with the third party conservation easement, we're trying to protect the core, the, the majority. But we do understand that there's going to be those edges for roads and things like that that are in the long-term transportation plan. When we bring forth those conservation easements before you, we will identify those issues. We will point to the long-term transportation plan and we will show you how those conservation easements held by a third party don't interfere with such projects. Thank you. A follow up if I may. Sure. Uh, 
And so you say if it's on our long tra long term transportation plan, what if it's not currently on, but there's some future need? Would there be a problem? Um, if you're putting a on the edges, on the edges, I think that we are looking for a solution where there would not be a conflict. But what we're trying to protect is like a road going through the middle and bisecting a conservation area that's been there, you know, for for a long time, and and the intention was not to bisect it. So. I think that we can come up with a solution that gives us that flexibility moving forward. I think that I can, we can achieve what we want with the preservation, long-term preservation of lands while still allowing for that. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked the question. Yeah, thank you. Commissioner Sachs. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Following up on what uh, Commissioner Powell was talking about, uh, we've done this in the county, but does the state of Florida have a uh, supersede its authority to do or modify or take away or add to all these uh, conservation areas in the county? Some, so if I understand your question correctly, um, there are certain parcels that were purchased in partnership with the state of Florida and they have their own layers of protection where the state would um, supersede you know, any mm -hmm. local government action uh, because of the protections that are in place or because of uh, conservation agreements that we have with like the Florida Communities Trust is the example that I'll use. Um, I, I think that answers your question. Sure, no, I think that, well, my, the, the question comes down to, and he brought it up, we're making these conservation uh, for, the, for the county. Uh, is there any authority uh, superior to us that would indicate that they would have uh, that power to take it away or modify it? We, or do we have certain protections, uh, <laughs> if there's any protection, to make sure that that doesn't happen? So the protection on these particular lands, these conservation natural areas, um, the protection comes from the state itself because there are state agreements and state entities, say like DOT couldn't come in and supersede Florida Communities Trust protection of that land. So we're protected against FDOT? On, or, on some of those properties, right? yes. I, w I believe that that okay, is the good, case. Good. I'm okay. sure an attorney would argue on both sides of this issue, um, but, but the That's agreements what attorneys that we have do. in place are, the FCT agreements we have in place are very stringent and protective of the natural state of the land. Okay. It would be very difficult, if not impossible, to untangle that with regard to the state agreements that we have. Excellent, thank you so much, thanks. Thank you, any other questions? Seeing none, I believe we had a motion and a second. Correct, we had a motion and a second? Or did we, we did? I, we'll have, yes, would someone please make a motion to approve initiation of item 12? So moved. Thank you. I have a first and a second. Commissioner Weiss. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, that actually, oh my heavens, brings us to the end of the regular agenda. So we'll go to comments. Attorney Stone. No comments. Uh, nicely run first meeting, Mayor. Mm, we'll get there. <laughs> planning director. Is it planning or zoning first? It, mine says planning at the moment. Thank you. So now it says zoning. No comments. Now it says executive director. That's, I guess that's me. I'd just like to um, wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. We won't see you before the holiday. And uh, very thankful for my team. They're, they did a great job, as always. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy County Administrator. No comment. That leaves us to, add it to our commissioners. So we'll work from uh, my left, your right. Commissioner Flores, any comments? I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Commissioner Sachs. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good meeting, and what a great staff we have in planning and zoning. Really appreciate all you do on this. Good meeting. Thank you. Commissioner Woodward. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, to all of Planning and Zoning, happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see the rest of you next week. Thank you. Commissioner Powell, any comments? 
Uh, happy Thanksgiving, and thank you to the staff and to the commissioner team up here. That's it. Commissioner Weiss. No comment. Vice Mayor Baxter, I got it right this time. Thank you, Mayor Marino. I would uh, like to give staff direction in regards to the exemptions for the agricultural. I'd like you to study the exemptions for agricultural structures in the FEMA flood plain review and identify areas that we can make up the points. And I see that Doug has already left, but he knew these. this was coming after the Ag Enhancement Council meeting, so. Is, this is specific to the X zones? Is that what you're referring Correct. to? Correct, okay. the X zones. So the X zones mm -hmm. um, and how we might, because at CRS, their public safety is coming back with a CRS update. <clears throat> So we could include it with that workshop That'd be great. as well um, yep. and, and kind of decide what the points look like. And we should also bring back the implications of removing X zone versus leaving it in to our floodplain review. And if we leave it in just uh, specifically those exemptions? The exemptions as the agricultural structures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And also, um, I would like to request that the code, this says enforcement, but I believe we are um, calling compliance. it compliance <laughs> department. Clarify how staff verifies the identity of individuals making complaints under the new Florida statute because we've had some issues where we have not been able to um, verify, I guess, identities and just what does that look like? And you can follow up with me, uh, I guess, individually, but I didn't know if anyone else was having the same issue. So we'll leave that up to the board. No, um, we're not allowed to you know, take anonymous complaints, so we do mm -hmm. verify the complainants. And if, if it's a, a if it was a complaint that was filed prior to that action, then we couldn't really speak to that. But um, anything in the near, you know. Recent. But are we verifying that the name matches with the property? You know, like they actually live there. It's not some uh, anonymous person giving fake information. No, we sorts. always refer if they they give us a phone number and we follow up and confirm the person. Um, I, you know, they don't necessarily have to be. A resident, they could be somebody that's observed something and are, is making a complaint. So uh, we do verify that it's a real person with a real contact information that we can use in case we have to come back um, for a special magistrate hearing or something. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. And, I, and to follow up on what Vice Mayor Baxter said, the point system is we we need to know what is a point, what is five points, what is ten points, what is twenty points, because I think there. There's been a big discussion about that, um, and if something comes out, how does it really affect us, and how can we make it up in another place? So, um, I, I would say Vice Mayor Baxter's question is a good one, and that that'd be information that we could all use. Thank you, um, and as for me, Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, staff, and we are adjourned at 10:08. Thank you. <laughs>